In this video, I'm going to walk you through using the Word 2016 status bar. You'll learn how to customize the status bar, what all the features are that are available on it, where it's located on your screen, and how it can really benefit you as you're working with your document. Just open up a Word document you already have and follow along from there. So once you've got your document open, let's go to the very bottom of the window, and this is where your status bar is located. If you can see where my mouse is here, this is your Word status bar. It starts at the left and works its way all the way across to the right. So your views and also the zoom are included as part of the status bar. Like I said, the status bar is customizable, so you can add and remove features from it as you're working with your documents. So the first thing I want to do is walk you through how to get into the status bar to do your customizations, and then I want to walk you through what each of the customizations are and what they mean to you. So to access the customizations, you're going to do a right click within the status bar, anywhere where there's a gray area. Once you do the right click, it's going to bring up the customized status bar dialog box, and this is going to list all the customizations that are available to you. Now you'll notice some of them have check marks next to them and some of them do not. Any item that has a check mark means it's turned on to show up on your status bar if it's a feature that you're using within Word. And as we're looking at some of the customizations, I'll explain what that means. So each one of these customizations is a toggle. Check to turn it on, uncheck to turn it off. What I want to do right now is just walk you through what each one of them means, and then we'll walk through how they appear within the status bar. So if we start at the very top, we've got our formatted page number. Now what this does is it lists the page number that would display in the header or footer of a document. If we go below that, we've got the section, and this is going to display the section number for the cursor's current location. This is great if you're working on a long document that has multiple sections and you're not sure exactly where you are within your document. You can figure out which section you are or you can go to another section. I'll show you how to do that. The third customization is the page number. This is different than formatted page number. What the page number does is it lists the actual page number of the page for the cursor's current location and the number of pages in the document. Below that is the vertical page position and this displays the vertical position of the cursor from the top. This comes in handy if you're putting images in and you want to be exact on where they're going to be placed within your document. And you can see from where my cursor is within my page, I'm at 4.3 inches. And just to back up a step, you can see that my page number would list page one of six, whereas formatted page number only lists the page number itself and you can see I'm in section one of my document. Now if we continue on, we've got line number, and what this does is it lists the number of the line of the text the cursor is currently in. So I'm in line 17. Next is column. Now this doesn't say what you would think it would. It does not list the number of columns that are in your document and which column you're in. Instead what it does is it displays the character position of the cursor in the current line. So I'm on the 62nd character within this line. Then we have our word count. This is going to list the total number of words within your document. Now when we actually go to the feature within um, the status bar, I'm going to show you how this can vary. Below that is our character count with spaces. So that tells me how many characters are within my document. And this sometimes becomes important when you've got um, a report you're doing or um, an article and you're giving so many characters you can put in or the word count, you've got so many words you can put within your document. Next is spelling and grammar check. As you can see, my document has no errors in it. But what this would do, it, it, was, it would allow me to click on the item within the status bar to correct any errors within my document. Now before you can use this item on your status bar, you must make sure that you have your spell check turned on in the Word options. Next is language. This would list any language where your cursor is within your documents. Next item is signatures. If you're using digital signatures and there's a digital signature within the document, it will display it down on the status bar. 
information management policy. This indicates that information rights management or IRM has been used to restrict permissions within this document. Permissions, it's going to display an icon when access to the document has been restricted. Now you'll notice these ones have off next to them. These are features that you need to turn on within your system to actually use them. Next is track changes. This is going to display whether track changes is turned on or off within your document. The nice thing about this feature within the status bar is you can go to the status bar to turn on track changes or to turn it off. You don't have to go to the review ribbon and go into track changes from there. Caps lock does exactly what it says. It's going to tell you if your cap lock is turned on on your keyboard. Overtype. This is a toggle. It's either going to show you that you have overtype turned on, which means where your cursor is, if you start typing, it's going to type over the characters, or if you have it set to insert. And what that means is where your cursor is within your document, it's going to start adding the characters that you're typing. And again, it's a toggle. You can turn it on as overtype or click and turn it to insert. Selection mode. This indicates that extend mode is enabled. Um, and what that means is if you use the F8 key to anchor your cursor when you're going to be selecting an area of text or an area within your document, it will put the selection mode on so that you know you have it anchored. And then you can click on it to unanchor it when you're done or hit the escape key to turn it off. Macro recording. It's a toggle to start or stop recording a macro. Upload status will display the upload status for the document to the web. Then we have the, this document has been updated. To refresh the document, click Save. This alert will be displayed if there are document updates available. So if you're um, collaborating with somebody else on the document, um, you've shared it out with them and they've made changes to it, you're going to see this. The view shortcuts are the shortcut icons to change the view of your document. Whether you have the print layout turned on or you want to switch to the read mode view or to the web layout view so you can toggle between the different views. The zoom slider, that gives us our slider over here. If you have this turned on, you're able to zoom in and out using the slider bar. And zoom itself, that's the percentage that it shows. So if you wanna see what percentage you're zooming to, you'd wanna turn that option on. So those are all the different customizations that you can make to the status bar. And so it depends on what you're working on or what type of document you're working on, which ones you want to turn on. If it's where you're working on a document that has multiple sections or a lot of your documents have sections, you may want to turn that one on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and turn them all on. And you'll notice some of them come up and some don't because they're features that I'm not using within Word. So as I'm clicking on them, if you watch my status bar, you'll see things get added. If I click anywhere else within my document, it'll remove it from the view. So now I've got everything turned on that I want to see within my document. There were a couple things that I wanted to come back to when we were talking about the different customizations. One was the words within your document. If I click on words, what it's going to do is it's going to take me out and open up the word count dialog box. And this is going to give me statistics about the document. Number of pages, words, characters with no spaces and the characters including spaces, number of paragraphs and number of lines. Now the one thing I really want to note on here is this checkbox. If it's checked, it's going to include counting um, words within your text boxes, footnotes, and endnotes. If you uncheck it, you'll see my counts change because it's not including those. So it's up to you whether or not you need those included when you're doing a count. So we'll close out of that. Same thing happens if I come over and click on characters. It's going to take me out so I can see my word count dialog box. And that happens with a lot of the um, items on your status bar. When you click on them, they'll run an action. So for instance, if I click on page, it's going to pull up the go to dialog box so I could enter a page number I wanted to go to if I needed to move somewhere else within the document. Section. Same thing, but I could come down and I can click on the section and type in a section number I wanted to go to. Now, if I come over and click on my page one of six, now remember this is different than page itself. Page itself is going to give you the page number that would be displayed in the header or footer. This item is giving you the actual page number 
of the page where the cursor is within the document. When I click on it, it's going to bring up the navigation sidebar so I can navigate to another area within my document. And you can see it updated my location when I did that. If I click on AT, it's going to do the same thing um, as the section and page. It's going to take me to the go to dialog so that I can move to another section or page or line within my document. Line does the same thing, brings up our find and replace, the go to dialog, and so I can choose where I want to go within the document. So a lot of these are like shortcut keys instead of having to go to the tab or ribbon or trying to remember the um, keyboard shortcuts for them. Now this icon, which looks like a book open with a check mark, that's our spelling and grammar check. It's got a little check mark on it, which means there are no proofing errors. And when I hover over it, it'll tell me that as well. If I click on it, it'll tell me spelling and grammar check is complete. Now, if I go ahead and I put junk in my document, you'll see it gives me my little squiggly and it tells me that there are errors found. So when I click on it, it's going to bring up the editor sidebar. Now remember, this was one of the features that you have to have the spell check turned on within the word options in order for this to work. So I could fix my word from here and come back to my document. This is the toggle I was telling you about for track changes. So if I click on off, I can turn it on. So now if I make changes within my document, it's using track changes. And again, click on it to toggle it off. Insert, toggle between insert and type over. So if I wanted to insert within my document, or if I wanted to type over, it'll overwrite what's there. This feature is my macros. There's no macros currently running, but if I click on it, I can go ahead and set up a macro to run. So I wouldn't have to go to my developer tab and do it from there. Now, one of the other ones that I wanted to show you was the signatures. I don't have a digital signature in this document, so I'm going to switch to another document so that you can see that. This icon here is the one that tells you there is a digital signature within the document. When you click on it, it's going to bring up the signature sidebar so you can see the digital signature. Now, this one has an error in it, but I just wanted to show you what it's going to do. But you can see, even though I checked all of the items, only certain ones come up because I'm only using certain features. If I go back to the status bar and do a right click, I can come in and turn off features that I don't want to use. If I want to turn off my zoom, I can do that as well. Now when I come back to my document, you can see it no longer tells me what percentage because I turned that off, but I still have my slide bar so I can zoom in and out. I'm going to go ahead and add another section to this document so you can see what happens with the section on the status bar. Go to layout, come to my breaks, and I'm going to put a section break next page. Now when I come down into this section, it updates and it tells me now I'm in section two. And you can also see since I moved to another page, it'll tell me I'm on page two and I'm on line four. So you can see how handy it is to utilize the items that are available on the status bar. Make it work for you so that you can keep track of where you are within your document, what section you're in. And again, sections come in really handy if you've got multiple sections, especially if you're doing different page numbering for the different sections within your document. Remember, go to the status bar, do a right click, and that's going to give you the customizations that are available. Remember when you're doing your word counts and your character counts, click on them to see whether or not you are including the text boxes, footnotes, and endnotes in your counts, because that can be very important depending on the type of document you're working on.